Good evening and welcome to one of our special one-on-one -on -one podcasts this evening with Kedwin Scott, the Notts County Centre Forward, part of our dynamic duo up from the North East. Kedwin, welcome tonight. Looking forward to having a good catch-up with you. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Right, OK, let's crack on, shall we? Um, before we get into the important stuff, uh, we had your mate on, uh, Mr Langstaff. And of course, when you both moved down, uh, he was telling us in his podcast, um, you're a good roommate, but you wouldn't cook for him. Why is that? Well, he, like, he likes his own food and stuff like that. He, he's got a very a basic palate, I would say. Um, he likes his chicken and, and rice, and I like to get a bit more experimental and make my own meals. <laughs> what, 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 what are you a dab hand at cooking up? Um... I've just been sort of getting these like where they send you the ingredients kind kind of thing and working off a card and stuff like that. And then I sort of, if I don't fancy an ingredient, I'll, I'll mix it up myself, do sort of pasta bakes, bolognese, um, fajitas. So anything sort of meat and, meat and carbs, really. Uh, are you the cook of the team then? Because I know when I used to be at Leicester and one or two other clubs, there'd always be one or two lads that fancied, the, fancied being the cook. Nah, I wouldn't go that far. I'm not going to start saying saying I'm a, a Michelin star chef or anything like that, but I can I can get around. All right, OK. Uh, you're cooking up a storm in the kitchen. You're doing all right on the pitch. Um, I want to take you back through your career a little bit. And I think it would be, I don't know if this is the right phrase, um, but you've been unfortunate in a way to have one or two false starts, you know, you had the four years at Huddersfield, couldn't quite get through uh, into the first team. You went up to Dundee, and your dad was telling me about that. Um, you even had a four-week trial at Newcastle, didn't you? We'll talk about that. You had the go at Carlisle. Um, and then Gates said it's really kicked off for you. Um, I I'm guessing you've got to be fairly uh, determined to be hanging in there with some of the setbacks you've faced in your short career so far, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I'm only, what, 23, nearly 24, and I feel like I've experienced a, a vast amount of emotions and, and things like that over the few clubs that I've had and the years I've spent sort of at the different levels, and I think that's stood me in good stead. Yeah. Um, OK, so we were chatting before we started, and um, so uh, I met your dad, or I should say your dad met me, and um, at Gateshead, when I'd walked from my travel lodge, uh, Newcastle City Centre, up, up over the bridge, up, up the hill to Gateshead. I'm sure you would know it well. And I was talking mm -hmm. with two old uh, Gateshead fans outside the ground. And a Notch fan came up, or he had a Notch shirt on, and he spoke in a broad uh, northeast accent. Uh, and, he, and he looked at me and he says, I know who you are. And I, I thought that was a bit disconcerting, given his accent. I says, go on, then who are you? And he turned around, he said, and he showed me, his, proudly showed me his 19 shirt, Scott. He said, that's my lad. He says, now watch your podcast every week. I said, fair, fair play, fair play. Um, he's obviously very proud of you. Um, he's a Newcastle United season ticket holder, isn't he? Is that your club from boyhood or not? Yeah, yeah, we're all Newcastle families throughout the family. Um I had Newcastle fans throughout the family and I had a season ticket when I could go when I was younger. Uh, but obviously with football and stuff, you don't really don't really get a chance to do that. And my brothers have both had season tickets as well. So yeah, I'd say big Newcastle fans. Um where did you actually grow up? Were you, were you in the suburbs of Newcastle or uh, I was born in Hexham. Yeah. Um I'm not sure if you've heard of it. It's just yeah, sort of half an hour outside of Newcastle. Yeah, and it's sort of a quiet area, which was nice. And then moved a little bit closer to Stocksfield, still in Northumberland. Um and yeah, I lived there before I sort of moved around. Football is um, very much a religion in the northeast, isn't it? And, and and not always had the best of times in comparison to the size of support and and, and, and the club. Um, was football always your sport, or were you a dab hand at cricket and the others as well? Uh, yeah, no, I say football was first and foremost. Um, my granddad's really big on cricket, um, so he. He got me into that. I, I wasn't very good, to be honest. Um, so, no, I always took football very seriously. And um, I play a bit of golf now as well. But as I say, I'm not not the best at that as well. That's more to socialise and, and get the legs moving sort of after a game and stuff. Get a bit of active recovery in there. 
Um, it's a very competitive scene up, up in the northeast for clubs. So you ended up at Huddersfield. Yeah. Uh, how, how did that come about? Well, as you said, it's very competitive up there. So you've got sort of Middlesbrough, Sunderland and Newcastle, big clubs and sort of big academies. And they're the three that every player wants to be in. And they've only got a, a select amount of slots. And I didn't really sort of make the cut at that level. Um, so from my sort of Saturday league team, we would make up a representative team that would go down and, and play different academies. And Huddersfield was the first game that we played. So went down there and, and had a decent game and they asked me to come back, back in on trial. So I think it was something like 14-15. Um, what's it like at that age to move from out of the family home? Were you based in Huddersfield as a young teenager? I read somewhere you'd said a big thank you to a, to your landlady or something down there yeah, who, who put you up, presumably. Yeah, so when I was 15, that was when I when I went down there on trial and, and I was just sort of commuting for the games on a Saturday and playing for the under-16s. And then when I became full-time at 16 uh, to 18, which is what youth team years, I moved down there and stayed with a, a landlady there who was brilliant. And she's passed away now, unfortunately. But, no, she was great and helped me settle in well. Um, would that have been when David Wagner was there? And, and they, were, they, they were a pretty good team at the time? Yeah, so it was it was Chris Powell to start with. Yeah. Um, in sort of my first year and a bit. And then... David Wagner came in and, and had his new ideas and that was when they got promoted to the, the Premier League and mm. and then subsequently relegated a couple of seasons later. I was there during just about all of that. Did you get close to the first team or not while you were there? Um, not really, no. Um, I did well at, at youth team level and was involved with the 23s, but there was a whole sort of restructure of the academy. I'm not sure how much you know about that where they sort of converted to a, a B team rather than a 23s team and, and stuff like that. They still run a B team now. Um, so, no, in the midst of that, I, I had a good relationship with Lee Bromby, who's still there as academy manager, I believe. And um, I was keen for my career to sort of try and take off to, to get fixed up elsewhere because it didn't look like there was going to be much opportunity there, especially the, because we're in the Premier League. Um, we always just sent a forward from an early age there. Yeah, always been a centre forward. Um, it's only really in the in the past couple of years that I've sort of become more of a dropping a bit deeper sometimes and, and linking up the play. But typically, as when I was younger, I was always an out and out number nine poacher, play on the last man kind of kind of uh, player. So um, I think you spent about four seasons at New at Huddersfield at the end. Um, how, how did that? come to an end because it's always difficult isn't it it's a small it's always the one percent of one percent of one percent of professional football as you go up that ladder um what what happened there yeah as you said it's the one percent um and I was sort of clued on to that from the beginning so it, it didn't really come as a shock I was always prepared for it might not work out there you just have to be resilient and make it work somewhere else and as I said just before about the restructure of the academy, um, it was sort of up in the air and I had a good relationship with one of the members of staff there and, and, and had a conversation with them and said, what, what's the crack, what's happening? And he just was honest with me, which I really appreciate, and said, look, it's going to be difficult for you to get a contract at the end of the year. Now we're in the Premier League. We're having conversations um, about what we're going to do moving forward. So I said, well, look, if I can get fixed up elsewhere, would you be willing to sort of terminate my contract and let me leave for free? Um, and that was sort of to try and get into men's football and, and get some experience under my belt. And I was really grateful that he let me do that. And I think it worked out well in the end, to be honest. So what happened next? You ended up north of the border, didn't you? Yeah, I moved up to Dundee. Um, sort of signed a, a contract from the January until the end of the season and sort of linked up with the, like, it was a sort of a reserve team, but they didn't really have a reserve team. So it was kind of first team players who weren't getting many minutes and then a few young lads who would make a team and then they would play sort of once a week on a, on a Monday and did well in that and then was shortly after offered a new contract for the following season and, and involved in lots of first team games. OK, so... um is it a big culture shock going to Dundee? I have been there a few times. And obviously you've got Dundee and Dundee United. And, and I guess down the years, those two clubs have had their kind of 
um, I don't know, interesting owners and ups and downs. And the, the two clubs are very close, aren't they? Either side of the park, aren't they? There, Clo uh, closer even, I think, than Knotts and Forest. Yeah, um, obviously Knotts and Forest is separated by the river, but they're sort of on the same street. And um, you can for the away games and stuff, you would you would just walk down, you just meet at the ground, and then walk down. It would take you about thirty seconds. Um, so yeah, sort of weird and to experience that was was really good um obviously playing with with first team players day in day out that that helps you develop development massively um you ended up going out on loan didn't you um berwick rangers uh, and forfar berwick of course famous for being the only english club in the scottish league yeah and that's presumably not too far um from your homeland yes yeah, so I, I ironically it was probably closer to my to my house in Newcastle than it was actually to my parent club in Dundee. Um, so went on loan there and it was kind of, it was a difficult time because the club was sort of going through a bit of a, a rough period with managers and stuff like that behind the scenes, bit of a, a mess, I would say, and that resulted in them getting relegated. But like I got a few, my first professional goals there and first sort of senior appearances. Um, so. For me, it was a positive experience. Um, what's it like, the Scottish Leagues? Because you'd, you'd be pretty young then, and I would imagine it's fairly physical at, at that level. Yeah, that's fair to say. Um, there's a few a few long ball teams. Um, so, yeah, you've, got, you've sort of got to sink or swim, really, um, especially at a young age like that. You sort of have to catch up on the development and... I don't know, the, the Scottish lads always seem very athletic and well-built. Um, it, it's not much much different to the English game, really. Um, it's just probably a bit more direct. Um, so so what, what happened in Scotland? Because you, you didn't really, and I spoke to your dad about this, you didn't really get much of a chance at Dundee, did you, while you were there? Uh, I did for the first season, so... The first season I came in from the January, I was sort of did well in the reserve games and I was quickly involved in all the squads for the first team uh, and made a few appearances as well towards the back end of the season. Uh, but then, as I say, when I went out loan to Berwick, during that time, the manager at Dundee lost his job and a new manager was replaced. And then when I came back from Berwick, I didn't really sort of just get a look in. I was sort of just left to go in the gym with a, with a couple of the other lads. It wasn't needed for the numbers and stuff like that. So... That was a bit of a sad end. I was disappointed with the way that sort of came about and probably had a bit of a lasting effect on me over the next, when I left, probably over the next year. Go on, explain. So it was it was difficult trying to get my career back on track after that because I'd spent sort of six months in a gym, um, just not involved in any sort of football. And sometimes we would be made to train on our own with, three or four players, uh, which was a bit demoralising and a, and a bit mentally tough. Um, so especially at, what, 19 years old, when, when that's happening, you have to sort of, you sort of got to get, get on with it and, and things like that. But you, let's be honest, you're not on good money at that age. And it's not like, I suppose it's not nice for anyone, but it's a bit different when you're earning big, big money and you're comfortable and stuff like that. But when you're a young 19-year-old who's really hungry to, to play football and stuff like that, it's demoralising um, and mentally difficult. And I probably felt sorry for myself a little bit too long and felt a bit hard done by. Um, so when I fell out of that full-time football, I found it really difficult and it took me a bit longer to, to get going again, really. So you, you came back effectively home and then you were playing... Um... I'm not sure it would be Northern League or whatever you would call it. So, Dunstan, uh, and, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, aren't I? Hebben? Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, presumably, that was a couple of notches down from where you'd been at. Yeah, yeah, um, that's fair to say. So, I, in that summer, I went on a few trials at, at Gateshead and um, Darlington and then ended up at Dunstan, but I just wasn't fit enough, really, looking back from not training or getting any sort of conditioning work in for a long period of time and then sort of found it difficult to go into clubs and new environments and, and express myself when I'm not in the right condition and shape. Um, 
Heban is an interesting story from what I can pick up. Um, you banged a load of goals in um, and you got spotted by Newcastle or invited for a trial, which I'm, that, that's a pretty big leap up, isn't it, from Heban to Newcastle? I mean, what, what was going on there? And I, and I presume your dad and you being a, you know, a Newcastle fan, I should think he was pretty excited when you said, Dad, I've got a trial at Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at Heaven, I, I can't thank them enough. They were they were great and showed me a lot of love as well, which was what I needed at the time and an opportunity to go and play. And they they were quite a footballing team, especially for that level. You don't tend to get many play uh, teams you like to play. Um, so that suited my game as well. Um, so when I went in there, the, the managers were great and stuff like that. And that sort of worked for me and I found that, not that I fell out of love with football, but I started to really enjoy it again. Um, and then obviously you saw the success on the pitch off the back of that. And I got a few goals and one day I come in and they said, oh, can you come in, come into the uh, the office and we'll have a chat. So I went in and they just said, oh, Newcastle have been watching you, they want you to go on a trial. So I couldn't believe it really. I mean, did you think they were winding you up? Yeah, I did a bit. Like, I didn't really sort of understand. I was 22 years old, like, at the time. Um, so I thought it's going to be a bit of a step up from, from the Northern League to the Premier League in a couple of years. Um, so, yeah, but I was, I was open to the opportunity as well, especially being a Newcastle fan. So you, told, you rang your dad up and said, I've got a trial with Newcastle. What did he say? Well, they invited us both into the meeting. Oh, and right. I think yeah, I think he was he was probably as shocked as I was, to be honest. Okay, so first day at Newcastle United, what happens? Were you told to report that sort of thing? Can you believe it? Well, that was a bit I've been there when I was younger, so it was a bit surreal coming back and it was during like the COVID, all the COVID sort of like implications and, and procedures and stuff like that so it was a little bit weird um a player a player liaison officer was sort of designated to to give me report times and make sure I was in all right and everything went smoothly and I reported for training and and met the lads and stuff and the lads were great and the coach was great as well which which always helps did you have any interaction at all with the first team or were you sort of quite a long way away from that no, nah, it's in a separate sort of location, but um, in the reserve games that I played, there was a, a few first team players who were playing to get minutes and stuff. So that was that was good to sort of see what the standard was like with them as well. Did, did you come across Cal Roberts at all? Because we we, we have a, we've had a history over many decades at Knotts of players coming from the northeast, going back to Tommy Johnson under Neil Warnock, um, and obviously Cal Cal was in and around that Newcastle scene at that time. No, I never, never come yeah. across Cal. Um, the first time I sort of met Cal was when I come down here. Right. Okay. So, so how did that that trial spell go? It went well, to be honest. Um, it, it was difficult going from part time football into a full time environment and with sort of players with Premier League aspirations. When like a few weeks ago, my aspirations were just to to score goals and and keep climbing the ladders as high as possible and I'd gone from one end to the other kind of um, so it, it was difficult but it was enjoyable as well and then at the end we just had a conversation with the, with the coaching staff as well um, who just sort of said that they really liked me and that they respected the way I was around the place and I was a good character and, and brought energy to the, to the group and stuff like that so that was probably the biggest compliment they gave me um, but they ultimately they said it, it would probably be a big, too big of a step up at 22 to make the first team within a year in the 23 setup, uh, which was entirely fair enough, and I agree with them as well. Um, and that would mean I would block sort of a year's development of a younger player as well, which is also understandable. So clearly it's a dream come true just to be involved with Newcastle. Um, was it a case of you're gutted it's not worked out, or did it perhaps kind of reignite things a little bit for you and give you a bit more self-belief in terms of professional football? Yeah, I think it was definitely the latter because following that, I went sort of straight into Carlisle on a trial. Um, and after having that month of really good coaching and, and full-time football, I think that was what ultimately helped me in a contract at Carlisle. 
and get back into the football league. So how did Carlisle work out for you? Um, that was a frustrating one, but it was similar in ways to my experience at Dundee, which sort of that experience at Dundee really helped me when I come to Carlisle because I was in there and I was working hard every day and I felt like I was performing in training and a lot of the players were, were very complimentary to me and would, would speak to me and just say, look, like you've come in, you've done really well and stuff like that, you'll get a chance and stuff. And, and unfortunately, I didn't get a chance and sometimes in football you don't. Um, so I come at the end of the season, they, they said to me, like, we've been really impressed with you in training and stuff, but we want to see you in more 11 v 11 games. Uh, would you like to come back in pre-season? Um, so I just thought to myself, like, for my career, I would rather drop down a couple of levels and play regular because I'd gone from Northern League to League Two. So if I can go somewhere in the middle and, and have a successful season, then hopefully kick on again. So you're back on your old stamping ground at Gateshead, yeah? Um, mm -hmm. How did that all pan out for you in terms of when you arrived? Was, was McCordy already there or did you arrive at a similar time? How did it work out? Yeah, Michael was already there. Um, he'd been there the season before and then he'd had a spell earlier in his career, I believe. Um, but no, I, I knew Louis Storey, um, one of the Gateshead players and coaches from my time at Heaven. He'd stepped up and towards the end of my time at Carlisle, he got in touch and said, uh, like, what's happening sort of thing. And and I said, oh, I, I don't know. Um I need to wait and find out what happens here. And he said, well, if, if nothing happens, we'd love, like, Mike and Busted would love to, to get you in here and have a look at you and have a chat and sort of see what they can do for me and what I can do for them. And I came in and, and it was just sort of the shoe fit, really. Um, did you surprise yourself, um, and Maka for that matter, with how that National League North Championship season went? Or did you kind of think we could be on to a, a good thing here? Uh, I think the team, if I'm honest, had sort of different kind of expectations and different opinions on how they thought it would go. I was kind of one who came in in pre-season and I, I was seeing what the coaches were doing and the players around me. And I thought, like, I don't see why we won't win this league kind of thing. Um, and then... There was a few other players who who had kind of played at that level longer than I had, who sort of not respected teams more, but had a bit more knowledge of what other teams were capable of and thought it would be a tough season and, and playoffs would probably be a good sort of outcome in the end. But yeah, no, we were all on the same page in terms of giving it our all every day and believing in the manager's ideas and, and, and that paid off for us. Did you and Maka kind of hit it off straight away? Yeah, he's a he's a really likable person. Um, and to be honest, the, the whole group was fantastic. And we, we were really close on and off the pitch. We did lots of sort of stuff together outside of football. And I think that really helped as well. Um, that would be your most goals in a season, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I scored, I think I got 20, over 20 in the... In the under 18s league, but like in terms of professional football, yeah, that's my the most goals I scored in the season. Now, when we had Macaron, um, he did say that when he came to Notts, um, he was he was asked by the gaffer to play a slightly different role, and he was often a bit more out wide and whatever. Um, has that surprised you when coming to Notts? Has it helped you as a pair? I mean, crikey, you scored enough last year you know, uh, in, in the way you played up front. I mean, how do you like the combination you play now? Is it much different to Gateshead or not? Um, it is. For, for him, I would say it was, it was vastly different. Um, if if Nods fans had watched him last season, you'd have probably looked at him and thought, that, well, that's not the same player. Um, so he, he's very, I'm sure he's told, he, he was very wide and he liked the out-to-in run and, he didn't like to be marked or, or very central. He liked to sort of drift in behind unmarked and, and get on the end of through balls and stuff like that and, and run from deep. This season, he sort of plays on the last shoulder and he's in the box sort of finishing and he's proved he can do both. But I think both, to be honest, work for, for me and him because I just sort of go off what he does and 
I think that complements his game and my game well, the way we, we all play. Those from the Jurassic era, like me and your dad, um, would often talk about strikers hunting in pairs. But the more modern game is often one man up, up top, as they would say on the telly and the, and the, and the, and the pundits. Um, it would clearly appear to be that you two come as a pair for knots and that you two as a pair goals wise certainly combine very well at Gateshead. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Um, sort of, you, I think you saw the other night, the Aldershot game was the, the perfect example of we started as a, a two up front alongside each other, but the, the gaffer's got systems and, and plans in place where he can deploy me or Maka in sort of any offensive position, really. I dropped in and sort of made a box midfield and played more alongside Ruben than I did Maka. And, and that really worked in, in, in picking Aldershot in the end. Um, you burst on the scene. You know, we're doing this interview after Aldershot, but before we go down to Dorking. Um, but you kind of had to wait your chance, didn't you? You had a bit of illness. You missed a bit of pre-season. You, you didn't start the first three or four games. I'm guessing after what's happened at other clubs, that must have been especially frustrating for you. Yeah, it's frustrating, but it's it's kind of other clubs have, have, and experiences have prepared me for, for moments like this. So I just sort of had to keep working hard and, and making sure I got to the levels that I needed to be at. And the gaffer's been patient and, and put me in. And then I've liked to think I've, gone on my way to, to take my chance a bit. Uh, you, you certainly have. It, it, is it three goals in four starts now, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I was actually sat next to your dad. Um, am I right in thinking, was Halifax your first goal? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was my yeah first but that's goal. right. Uh, uh, we were sat with your dad and he was very proud when you've, you've put it in from about, uh, what was that, about two yards header, wasn't it? Tight. I think... Tight. I think it might have been three or four yards, but that, I think that's the first out I've scored this season. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, your total yardage, not that we're complaining, from the three goals comes to what, about nine yards? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's that far. It might be six or seven. <laughs> I think the, the one on the line at um, all the shot, that was about a yard. And then the the one at um, Dagenham. Dagenham. I don't know how you got it almost, in. We were all that behind that goal. Either. I don't know how you got it in. <laughs> that was <laughs> almost out the pitch. Yeah. Um, I, I, but you, you do yourself a disservice. I mean, um, talking about the older shot goal, when you watch it back, you know, good first touch, good finish. You know, yeah. OK, you might not be far out, but there's, there's still some work to do to put it in the back of the net, you know. And you'd have probably heard a lot of Knotts fans saying, we, although we played some wonderful football last year, um, we didn't get many six-yard box goals. There was a lot of worldies, you know, Ruben, Cal, pinging them in, solo runs. Um, so you, I don't know whether you may or may not be surprised that us Knots fans wax lyrical about you and, and, and Maka, you know, like just getting them in from three yards. We like them because you have to score. you have to score plenty of them if you're going to win anything. Yeah, I think the problem with sort of worldy goals and, and relying on players to take on three or four players, then it, it's not really sustainable. Yeah, I, I suppose if you're getting those chances in the six-yard box, then you're sort of more likely to, to win more games and stuff like that rather than relying on sort of solo run and stuff. But then again, we've got players who can do that. Like yeah. Ruben's unbelievable. He can drift past four and five players and creates loads of chances. And he, to be honest, he draws players to him, which leaves more room for, for the other offensive players to, to get in behind. So talking about Maka and, and the slightly different role he plays and more, more in the box now, um, has that surprised you? Because you would know him presumably better than anyone at not having played with him last year. Yeah, like I said before, honestly, if you'd watched sort of his highlights from last season and compared them to this season, you, you would say that wasn't him and it was a it was a different player. But I think you've got to give the gaffer credit for that because um, maybe shouldn't say this, but when we first come down, he was a bit worried about 
the way he was he was going to be asked to play and he didn't know if it, it would be suited to him or not. And I think he's proved to himself that he, he can do both sides of the game. He can if, if a manager wants to use him out wide as a winger, more of a winger, then he's got that in abundance and then he's an unbelievable finisher. So he's, he's got that in the box as well. Now, he beat you to coming down to Madeleine. You followed him not too long afterwards. How, how did the move materialise from your perspective? Um, I, I'd spoke to him and stuff like that about about it and sort of he was saying how impressed he was about when he come down and, and not to go and touch my agent and he fed back to me and I'd had all that information off Macca about the size of the club and sort of the recruitment and the detail and the professionalism and stuff like that and so sort of they invited me down and I had a look around and I was just as blown away as he was and, and it was a no-brainer from there. You came down with your dad didn't you? When your dad said he came down with you. Yeah, yeah, a few of my family came down and, and they were all impressed as well. Um, the staff were lovely and treated them really nice and stuff like that. And it's a, it's a club full of great people from, you know, everyone in the office and all the coaching staff as well. Family's a big part of it because uh, I noticed on your Twitter bio, you've got a photo from Gateshead with, with the family on it. Uh, and I think virtually all of them, I met them on Tuesday night at the Older Shot game. They all came down, didn't they? And I think, forgive me, I'm not quite sure of which relatives are which, um, but uh, a couple of them, they'd come down in their motorhome and were stopping down somewhere outside Cockgrave for a couple of nights, they were telling me. Yeah, that's my grandma and granddad. They're, they're really good and they, and they love it, to be honest. They're travelling around and they've done it since sort of Huddersfield and, and Dundee. Um, come down and watch games and, and put loads of miles in. So now I really appreciate that. Yeah. And, and your dad doesn't miss too many, does he? Nah, he done well, to be fair. We played at, at Montrose when we were at Dundee in the reserves. And it, that's about three and a half, four hours. And he was he was getting up there most games. Really? So he drove up for you in reserve? Crack. Yeah. <laughs> so so if it's if it's um if not a plane or gates at a plane, and Newcastle are at home. He would be where? If if I'm playing for Nods, he'll be at Nods. And if he, he uh, if he can't get there, or for whatever reason, he'll go to Newcastle. But he always prioritises my games first. Yeah, I, I thought you'd say that because because he did say to me he was um, a, a Newcastle season ticket holder. And I think possibly after Halifax. Newcastle were at home on the Sunday because when I saw him again, he, he said, Oh, he went to Newcastle on the Sunday. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's an it, ideal world where you can get to my, to my game on a Saturday and the Newcastle game on a Sunday. But obviously, sometimes he's got to make the decision to, to come down here or stay up there. Um, expectation wise, um, I think one of the challenges with not having been a founder member of the Football League, always been in the league. You know, I can remember us going to Newcastle and winning at Newcastle, you know, before you were born. Um, I guess it's, there is an expectation. There aren't too many games, home or away, when us as fans would not expect you to win. Uh, and that can be a double-edged sword, can't it? Because there is expectation. We don't want to be kind of tempting fate or anything. But the run of recent games, um, I'm guessing everybody in the camp is feeling pretty good at the minute. Yeah, that's fair to say. Um, obviously, the last three games especially, we've been sort of well worth the win and we've been sort of defending well and scoring lots of goals as well. I, I, off the top of my head, what I think we've conceded one maybe in the last four, four or five and, and yeah. scored, scored maybe eight or nine in that time as well. So it's kind of, when I was talking about things that are sustainable and stuff like that, the system that the gap has got and the way he wants to play, it's, it's sustainable and it's not sort of relying on any personnel, the personnel change and, and the system, the system's more enough, more than enough to cope with that. And you've seen sort of different players come in and drop out and, and that'll continue to happen. And the results and, and performances stay more or less the same, if not better, every time. You played in a championship winning team last year. Um, if you kind of compare and contrast that, albeit in a short time at Knotts, 
I, you know, are, are there are there any similarities? Are there you know, that you detect team spirit wise, etc.? Well, how would you compare the two from your short time at Knox? I'd honestly say it was very similar. Um, it's sort of built on a young group of lads who are hungry uh, and desperate to achieve things and and drive their careers forward and have success. Um, and the two managers that I've worked under over the last two seasons are, are very similar as well. Um, they're very big on mentality and and the work they put in is sort of it's scary, really. I, I know the fans won't see that and the, and the managers won't say in their interviews on, on how hard they work themselves. But so the gap of this season has been incredible. His, his detailing training is it, it's scary, to be honest. Um, we'll be out there working tirelessly on tactics and it's not really sort of waste any time wasted in training sessions. It's all functional and, and, and prep work. So, for example, at the weekend, the game was called off and the gaffer saw that as the perfect opportunity to, to get extra prep in for all the shot rather than, I know, other managers may sort of use that Saturday to have some fun and sort of relax a little bit. But no, the gaffer's he's focused and use that extra day as prep. Um, and then the game's on a Tuesday night. We come in on a Wednesday morning and he's he's been up analysing the game and he's come in, hosted a meeting and I thought we were pretty good, to be honest, on Tuesday night. And he's Very saying, good. look, we need to be better. We can do this better. We can do that better. And then we're recovering properly and, and sort of getting ready to go for the next one. But then if there is a time to, to have a a day off or have a little relax. He, he knows when that's needed as well. So he's got that balance of sort of when to really work us and, and rest us sort of spot on so far, in my opinion. Um, it, tend, it, it would appear two or three games, I think, in all, not so sure here, getting into a bit of a groove. Um, confidence, moment, momentum's a big thing in football, isn't it? Momentum's a big thing in football. And Looking at the likes of a Wrexham, a Chesterfield, a Solihull, who we, 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 we've beaten, um, you would think we're going to, whoever wins the league this year, and, that, and I'm presuming that is the aim, um, going to be a lot of points needed potentially this year, isn't there? Yeah, I think you see that in sort of all the leagues now that the standard's just crazy, really. And Typically in the past, if you won your home games and drew your away ones, then that would be enough. Yeah. And sort of this around 70 points, 80 points would be enough. Now you're talking sort of 90s and near 100 for most leagues to win it. So now we just have to really focus on ourselves, in my opinion. And I, I trust what the gaffer's doing and sort of is working so far. And I'll just keep working hard. You've obviously played in the pro ranks. Um McCauley seems to have kind of taken duck to water in terms of goal scoring and, and, and coming straight in. Um, what, 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 what do you think is feasible for you two guys this year in the main National League? I mean, you, 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 you got between your 55, whatever it was last year, in National League North without putting targets on it. Are, are those sorts of numbers, do you think, achievable for you both again this year? Um, I'll probably have the same approach that I had last year, and I'm sure Mac will do the same because it seemed to work for us. So sort of, I'll go in tomorrow. But after we get off the phone, I'll sort of wind down, go to bed, rest up, and then I'll go in tomorrow and I'll have a good session and, and get my legs going and get in the best possible shape for Saturday and then do all the prep for the game Saturday, you know, my roles and responsibilities if I'm to start the game or if I'm to come off the bench. And then whether I start or come off the bench, when I enter the field, if I come on, then I fancy myself to score a goal. And then once that game's took care of, I'll rest and I'll, I'll think about the next one. Um, do you stand a chance of scoring more than him this season or not? He's got off to a quick start, hasn't he? But like, like I say, look... Last season, it was there as well. We, we drive each other on and sort of make each other feel good and, and try and catch each other as well. So there's a healthy competition there. So now I'm, I'm going to be trying to hunt him down, of course. Um, 
set pieces, penalties. Um, were either of you, forgive my ignorance here, were either of you two on those last year at Gateshead? Uh, we, we alternated them, so we would have, I think in the, in the end, we got three penalties all season. I had two of them and he had one. Um, and you got and three all season? Them. Gateshead with the yeah. season you had? <laughs> yeah, three penalties. So, yeah, we, we just alternated them like that and... I think it worked out that I had two because I won two or, or whatever, and and I think he won one as well. So we ended up taking the ones that we won each. Uh, but no, it, it's sort of just like if he's on for a hat trick kind of thing or whatever, then I would have let him have it. This season, I think Ruben's on the penalties, um, so I guess it's down to him to decide if if one of us is maybe on for a hat trick or hasn't scored for a while or whatever. Then whatever need whatever's needed really. Um. My lad says uh, on Twitter, you threw a bit of a gauntlet down to Ruben. So you, you've, you've, ac you've, ac you've acceded to the penalty. So Ruben's got the pens. Um, I think you, 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 you were showing off your free kick prowess, weren't you, on Twitter? Yeah, well, I, I haven't like sort of never really taken free kicks. I always <laughs> think like I've not got the technical ability for that. And I, I prefer to score in the box like it would be uncharacteristic uncharacteristic of me to to step outside the box and try and hit a shot from 25, 30 yards. But no, I, I had to go and train the other day. I seen a few of the lads were taking free kicks. So I just had a bit of a laugh and, and walked over and said, look, lads, I'll show you how this is done and, and stepped up and hit a couple of good ones. So since then, I've been doing a few after training every now and again. And, and I'm looking all right. I don't think I'm the best in the team, but now I'm, I'm definitely looking all right. Okay. Good luck trying to get, uh, get Ruben off free kicks as well. <laughs> All right, good luck with that I one. I know. He's stubborn. He's stubborn, like, so <laughs> if he misses a few, I'll be pulling his legs saying, look, Rubes, I'm, I'm on the next one. Um, we spoke about the strength of other teams, only one going up. Um, how realistic is it that Notts can win the league this year? I think it's very realistic. I think it was realistic before the start of the season. And then now you've seen the sort of the opening games, 10 games or whatever it's been. Um, it, it, it's very realistic from the way the manager's got us playing and stuff like that. And the, most importantly, I think it's just the mentality that he, he's instilled in, in the team. Um, but it, obviously it's going to be tough. I'm under no illusion that it's going to be tough because it's sort of a, it's a strong league and it's a bit of a shame really that it's only one all my spot and you, you have to win the league to be promoted. And then, Obviously, when you go into League Two, there's only two that go down and, and four that go up. I, I would like to see a, a three and a three. Um, but no, if if we keep doing what we're doing, then I, I don't see why not. Um, how much more is there to come from you? Have we seen the best of you yet? Because to an extent, you've missed a bit of pre-season, haven't you? So, and I'm guessing it was a precaution on the Tuesday night when he brought both of you off, uh, getting you fully up to speed. Um, more to come from you yet? No, oh, definitely, yeah, hundred um, percent. Obviously, my first start was in the in the Halifax game, and that that was a tough game. That the pitch was really poor, um, so I wasn't really able to sort of get on the ball and stuff. Um, and then two days later, it was it was difficult to recover fully for that and and start that that game against Solihull. And but no, at Dagenham, I felt like that was probably the best performance I've put in so far. Um, but no, I think there's there's definitely more to come. But each game sort of presents a different challenge, really. Um, I just have to try and keep my place in the team. And if I fall out of the team for whatever reason, then get back in as quickly as possible. Have you noticed a big difference between National League North and this division? Yeah, there, there's definitely a difference. But sort of what I was saying to Marco at the start of the season, like scoring goals is scoring goals, no matter sort of what level you're playing at, if, you, if you've got it, you've got it, then there's no reason why you can't do it at any level. Um, and I think he's proven that more than anyone. Um, I don't think he had this many at this stage last season. So, and then the team we're playing in as well is, is a quality team. All, all, all the, the lads are, are top, top professionals and, and take it very seriously. And I think that raises a standard in training. Yeah, because you two have clearly taken to it, ducks to water, as we said earlier. But 
uh, York, for instance, who've come up, they seem, and I know they've got the new stadium, but they seem to have adapted to it very well as well so far. Yeah, we played York a couple of times last season with Gateshead, and to be honest, we're, we're much of a better team, and they sort of, they've done really well in the end to to get promoted through the playoffs because they never really looked like they would go up. Um, but as, as you've said there, they've, they've come up and they've had a decent start, so I think they've proved that there, there is quality in that league as well. Um, so far, so good. Um, I guess we as fans, we're always going to get a little bit carried away, aren't we? You know, you, you win for, we're going to conquer the league. We, we don't win a couple and well, we us, we need to sign three or four players. Um, how does the manager and you and, and you as players deal with those kinds of ups and downs. It doesn't matter whether you're Manchester City, not County in the National League. Everything is very, very polarised these days. There's not a lot of middle ground, is there? There's not a lot of middle ground these days. No, definitely, you're right. I think as fans, you, you're allowed to do that. Um, but as players, and, and I would say, without trying to put words in his mouth, the manager's main message is sort of never too high when you when you... Yeah get a good result and never too low when, you, when you're off the back of a bad result. And from my experiences last season, then when it's going well, embrace it and, and try and sort of carry it on and, and get on that roll. But when you sort of fall off track and you have a poor result, it's just about getting back on track as quickly as possible and how quick you can react from that and, and sort of damage limitations, sort of speak. Um. We all kind of look at you, and, and, and I think part of the popularity of these types of podcasts, and we spoke to several of the current group of players as well as the past players, is that as fans, we can get, we can see a little bit behind the mask. Yeah. We see you playing on the pitch. There will be sound by interviews afterwards, which clearly there are certain things you're going to say, and there are clearly things you're not going to say. Um, and I think these podcasts help get an insight into your character um, a little bit more um, without going into too much detail. But, you know, social media is clearly a, a very broad double edged sword at the minute. You know, and we have seen um, there was incidents earlier this season with Knotts, uh, one or two of the players, fans going a little bit too animated. Um, as a young man, I mean, wh wh where are you with your social media now? Do you do you, do you look at this stuff that fans post or not? Or how, how do you go about your life as a pro footballer knowing that if you look on this phone, some people are going to be, you know, St. Kedwin and others, he couldn't hit a barn door or whatever, what's he doing all week type of thing? Yeah, um, I'm kind of sort of laid back. I, I'm sort of fairly open as well. Like, um, I like to have a laugh. So... No, I enjoy sort of the, the, the comments and stuff that, that made me laugh on, on Twitter and, and stuff like that. Um, and I, I will try and interact with a few fans every now and again, sort of where appropriate. Um, but no, you just have to sort of water off a duck's back, really, and, and get on with it. Um, I guess I, I know you've referred to an incident earlier in the season um, about sort of players. I think that's just sort of emotional and players are frustrated because they really care and they want to do well um, and it, it's nothing other than that really and I won't mention the person's name but the person is sort of an unbelievable professional um, and drives the standard in training every day and he's sort of on players to to improve and, and wants it more than anyone so it's just because we, we care in the end and we don't ever do anything to on purpose or, or make mistakes on purpose. Um, yeah, and we just we just want to do well at the end of the day. Well said. Yeah, well said. Um, that's social media. Put that one to bed for a minute. Um, you've moved around a bit. Huddersfield, Dundee, Carlisle. Um, are you the sort that can take that in your stride? Because sometimes when players move around, and we've had this at Knotts, when players move out of their native environment, it can be quite daunting, can't it? You know, to settle into a new place. And it can affect, 
it can affect your whole kind of mood and approach to your job. You, Maka, having come from the northeast, would appear to be taking this very much in your stride, even if even if you've had to move out the house up with him now. Yeah, definitely. Um, as you say, I, I've moved about quite a bit and, and lived in a few different areas, so it's sort of an experience that I'm familiar with. I've uh, done it, done it a fair few times, and no, I've I've enjoyed coming down here, and the the environment's great. The, and the staff at the the office in in Notts County as well are fantastic, and they've been brilliant to be honest to to help me get settled in and stuff like that. And then when you come in with an enthusiastic manager and wants to work well and work hard every day, then that's all you're really focused on. How do you relax? Uh, play golf. Go for a coffee every now and again with it with a few of the lads, uh, Nando's every now and again, and stuff like that, and play sort of any board games and just just do anything to be honest. Yeah, and 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 um, I, I'm guessing although it's national league, the way as I understand it, Knox would treat players, approach things, overnight stays. This is very much full-time professional approach yeah yeah I, I don't know like how much you would see as fans uh but it, it is unbelievably impressive the, the whole infrastructure of the club um the the recruitment side is really impressive and, and the way they use the statistics and stuff and i think it's proved to be a fairly decent method as well um with the the players they've brought in and stuff um, yeah, and as you say, we get looked after properly and the environment's professional and stuff like that. So as a player, it's a dream. A dream. Yeah, well, let's hope we're all dreaming at the end of the season, Kedwin. Um, yeah, that's another one uh, before we finish. Um, Kedwin. Don't think we've ever had a Kedwin before, uh, as we were saying just before we came on air. Um, where, where, where's that one come from? Because it's, uh, I think it's St. Kedwin. And I read something, it's something about uh, translation or the traits of St. Kedwin, I don't know whether you've come across this before, uh, is hard and fair. That's apparently the traits of St. Kedwin. Did you know that? No, I had no idea. Yeah, um, there you go. Hard and fair, yeah? I like it. I think my dad thought he, he made it up, but it turns out it sort of had Welsh Welsh heritage to it. And sort of, it, I've mainly had Sedwin, to be honest, rather than Kedwin, but... Now, that's what I've mostly had over the years of sort of people who pronounce it for the first time. Ah, well, okay. Well, I'm glad you've tied that one. So, because I was told it was Kedwin by someone from Gateshead. Is it Sedwin or Kedwin? It is Kedwin, yeah. But I think everyone presumes it's a, a soft, like sort of sounding C rather than a, a hard C. Yeah, right. Okay, but we, but for all Knots fans, just so we know, it is. It's a it's a K. Yeah, think yeah, of it as yeah, a that's right. when, when, when they're saying hello to you in the coffee shop or at Nando's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's hey, right. Hey, but look, um, very good indeed. Uh, it's great to chat with you. Um, thank you very much for sparing the time. Wish you every success this season on behalf of all Notts County fans. Um, so good so far. Um, keep it up. Um, been great chatting to you uh, and on behalf of all Knots fans we wish you every success for between now and the end of the season Lovely, thank you very much cheers for having me on and, and hopefully I'll be able to see you at a game or two uh, Absolutely, well don't worry uh, I'll be uh, every away game your dad comes and finds me you see, he comes and has a <laughs> chat and, and, and on Tuesday he came he was, your family were taking the mick out of I had a sweatshirt on that I prefer, prefer to call Peach. I think they called it pink. But uh, so obviously he could find me. And he had his little binoculars. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he had his little binoculars. Lot. And I said, you I needed the them at Gateshead, not here. <laughs> yeah, a few of the lads have been onto, the, onto him about that, uh, watching the game for his binoculars. I didn't realise his eyesight was that bad, like, but <laughs> no, nah, he, must, he must need them. Hey. Well, as, lo as long as he can see you banging in the goals, we're all happy. Thank you very much, dear Kevin. Take care for now. Lovely. Thank you very much. Cheers.